This is the Lomo Lubitel 166U. The U stands for universal and Lubitel in Russian means amateur. Now this camera is probably the cheapest way to get into medium format film. It takes 120 format film. Uh, and over the course of more than 50 years, more than 5 million of these cameras were made. They were a, a huge success. So these cameras allowed photographers to get into medium format photography on a really small budget. So the Lubitel cameras started life uh, in the 1940s. The Soviet Union made a, a very similar looking camera called the Komsomolets, um, which was, we think, the first mass-produced camera in the Soviet Union after World War II. Now, the Komsomolets was actually based on a, a German camera, the Voigtlander Brillant, uh, one of their focusing versions from the 1930s. The Komsomolets was not a proper TLR, like the Lubitel, because uh, although you could uh, pop the top open, and see what was through the lens, you couldn't focus with it. So it was essentially a zone focus camera like the Smina or even the, the Lomo LCA. Uh, what happened in the late 1940s is uh, Lomo, which was based in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, they updated the camera and they gave it a, uh, a focusing screen. So when you move the, f the lens up the top, things come into focus. These two lens, the viewing lens and the taking lens, are interlocked with these little gears that you can see. So that was good for the main reason that uh, suddenly you could see what you were trying to take a picture of in focus. So the first Lubitel appeared way back in 1949 and it was uh, a huge success with Soviet photographers and also elsewhere in Europe. And the Lubitel family was constantly updated until well after the end of the Soviet Union. They didn't stop production until 1996 of this model, the Universal, which is really sort of the ultimate version of the Lubitel. So the Lubitel is essentially a, a plastic TLR camera with some uh, metal parts. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it has a 75 millimeter lens, a triplet lens. So that means it has three elements within the lens for taking pictures. That doesn't sound like a lot, but the triplet formula, uh, which dates from the 19th century, is probably the simplest formula for taking pictures that still allows you to get sharp images. Um, it's obviously going to be uh, less sophisticated than seven or eight uh, element lenses that you get in, in some cameras. But you can still take perfectly sharp atmospheric pictures with a triplet lens. So this lens, the uh, T22, is very similar to the lens used in Lomo's family of Smena cameras. They were very cheap, easy to use, uh, not toy cameras, but beginner's cameras that were, were built in extraordinary numbers in the Soviet Union, again from the 1940s up until after the fall of the Soviet Union. So it's a very similar formula. It's just been enlarged to uh, fit the, the format of 120 film. So at the heart of the Lubitel is uh, a shutter which goes from 1 15th of a second up to 1 250th and also B uh, bulb which allows you to do long exposures. That's not uh, a huge amount of shutter speeds but it's perfectly fine for you know, taking landscapes, taking street photography shots uh, handheld. This camera doesn't have any slow speeds, but that's actually a good thing because often it's the slow speeds that are more prone to sticking. Um, 
you often find with uh, older TLRs like uh, roller flexes or Mamiya's that you can get problems with those uh, slower shutter speeds sticking. There ain't no slow speeds in a Lubitel, so if they're not in there, they can't go wrong. So here's the thing about using a Lubitel. When you shoot with one of these cameras, you're essentially shooting like photographers did in the 1930s. It has really no frills uh, and the picture taking experience is, is very different than using uh, even TLRs made in the 70s and 80s like the Yashica mats or Mamiya's. As you can see, there's no traditional shutter button on a Lubitel. How you cock the shutter is this little lever and then using just a fingernail and you hear the, uh, the little clockwork clack of the Lubitel. That was at uh, 1 30th of a second. Um, so yeah, very, very different to uh, most of the cameras um, people will use, especially 35 mils where the shutter button is usually on the top. Um, this, this was a, a very similar arrangement to those on the Smina cameras, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's slightly old fashioned, but it doesn't take particularly long to uh, get used to it. There is one thing that you need to be aware of when shooting on a Lubitel, is that the shutter advance and the film transport are not interlinked. You have to advance the film with this knob on the side and then cock and release the shutter. If you don't advance, essentially you'll uh, just do a load of multiple exposures. The other thing for those of us who've been spoiled with uh, modern features like frame counters is there isn't one of those on the Lubitel either. So you actually have to use this little red window at the back of the camera and look for the frame number on the uh, backing paper of the film. The Lubitel is not up to the level of sophistication of cameras like the Rollerflex, but it's also a fraction of the price. So it is worth getting used to some of the quirks of the Lubitel because it does allow you to shoot uh, medium format film quite cheaply. It's not a high spec camera, but it's also not a toy camera. The lens at the, the heart of this little beast is a glass lens and uh, it's certainly capable of taking really, really sharp images in the center. A bit like the Smina and uh, LCA cameras made by Lomo, you are going to see a little bit of vignetting in the corner. It's especially noticeable when you're shooting darker tones uh, such as blue skies in summer, but it's not unpleasant uh, and I think it adds to the, the charm and the character of this camera's lens. The other good thing about this camera is it's really easy to load and that's not something you can say about a lot of medium format cameras. Um, it was intended for beginners, for amateurs, so L Lomo made it as simple as possible to load this camera uh, and that's really helpful if you're out you know, shooting during the day. Um, it keeps the frustration levels down a fair bit. Another good thing is because this camera has a, a relatively no frills features set, uh, there's very little that can go wrong outside of the, the shutter getting a bit sticky. Uh, so they're pretty reliable and if you need to get one fixed, they're pretty easy to fix. The Universal is probably the best of the Lubitel family to use. There are a few things you give up compared to some of the earlier models. You have a cold shoe rather than a, a hot shoe for using flash. Uh, but to be honest, I never, I've never used flash on this camera. It's not really what I think the, the style of photography you're, you're gonna be using this for. It's for street photography, travel, something a bit more slow and considered. Uh, it's got strap lugs, so you can put a strap around it for carrying around your neck. Not that it's heavy. I mean, this is mostly plastic, so you're not going to get backache from lugging a Lubitel around. It's relatively robust, even though it's mostly a, a plastic camera. Uh, it has a really good and reliable back door, so it's not easy to dislodge. 
um, so it means uh, hopefully your, your films aren't going to get ruined. There can be some issues with uh, light leaks with some of the Lubital family, but uh, I, I've seen less of those in the Universal than some of the earlier models. And I think if you're wanting to try 120 and not wanting to go down the toy camera route, this is a really good camera to try. You don't have to spend a fortune to buy one of these cameras. You can still find them for as little as 25 pounds in working order in the UK. You might pay a little more if you want something that's still boxed with the case and various other accessories. But for shooting 120 on the cheap, especially if you want to uh, experiment with shooting on a TLR, which does take some practice to get used to, we'll cover that in a, a later video. I think this is a, a really good choice. The name might mean amateur in Russian, but this camera is no rookie.